Hello, comic book readers. Welcome to another episode of the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. I am Dean, your host, and this is episode 32. Yes, 32. <laughs> <laughs> As always, uh, we are going to be taking a look at a story arc this week. Uh, and if you're joining us on one of the streams right now, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, thank you for participating along with us for this episode. Uh, we've got a lot to get through on this one. Uh, if you're new here and you don't know who we are, we are a book club for people who like to read comic books. Every week we'll take a different story arc or a collected volume, uh, which we'll read along together. And then we'll gather via these live streams to have a discussion and see what everybody thinks. So we will give some scores at the end and we will be asking for yours too. If you want any more information, you should find a link in the description of whichever platform you are on right now. And if you've missed out this week on reading along with us, we will let you know what we're reading next week at the end of this episode which will be chosen by you watching right now live uh it's that time again which you'll turn to pick what we're all going to read next so we'll have some more details about that at the end of the episode two so i think that's it i think that's the admin out of the way so a reminder of what we're reading this week we are going back to the 90s so dig out your spice girls records we are going to go and take a look at dc versus marvel or marvel versus dc depending on how you want to phrase it because i think they switched the title around halfway through uh this of course was published by both marvel and dc it was written by ron mars and peter david who shared that duty and the art was shared by dan jurgens and claudio castellini i do want to say nice Again, hopefully I've pronounced that right. I always come out of that really sheepish. Like, mm. yeah. <laughs> As always, folks, I'm John by my comic book compadres, and they are Phil from the YouTube channel Phil's Nerdiverse. Hey, everyone. How's it going? We have Shane from the YouTube channel Dawn of Comics. Oh, hoi, hoi. And we have Scott from the YouTube channel Scott Shelf. What up, nerds? What up, nerds? <laughs> Whoa, it's gone all gangster this, this week. Whoa. Well, I come away from the Welsh this time. <laughs> How are we? We all good. Good man. Excellent. Yeah. All right then. Are we excited for this one? We ready to oh, yeah. rumble? Let's oh, rumble. Yeah. We need a we need a Michael. What's what's his name? Michael Buffer. Well, the guy that does the uh, let's get ready to let's rumble. Get ready to rumble. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Exactly right when we got Scott. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we? Uh, shall we meet everyone that is joining us this week uh, for episode thirty-two? Uh, we have uh, Matt from uh, the Mystery Knights. Uh, he says, I'm here early, so I won't forget. <laughs> We've got Tom here from This Month in Movies. Good evening, nerd herders. Hope you are all well. Uh, the chat does its usual thing and jumps down on me. Uh, we have Liam Cartwright. How are you doing, Liam? Saying ahoy, hoy. Uh, we have the MJ Comics in here as well. Hope you have a good show tonight, gents. Thank you very much, uh, James and Mikey. Uh, we have Stormcore Collectibles, hashtag early squad. <laughs> is, it, is this a thing now, early squad? Early squad. <laughs> <laughs> we have Triple G Comics. Hi, all. Looking forward to the show. Thanks for joining us, mate. Uh, who else have we got in here as well? I see there's a few people on Twitch watching as well. Comic Band, Adam's here as well. Uh, hoi hoi is what he that's says. The, that's the catching phrase, isn't it? <laughs> I think oh, it is, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's you guys, that is. You're, you're all hoi hoi's. Uh, no I'm one can spell, spell Shamai this way. <laughs> <laughs> we have Daryl joining us as well. Hi, you, Daryl. We've got Coral and Adam saying hi, guys. Howdy to you. Uh, we have, I can see Phil and Shana in here. It always freaks me out. Hello, gents, says Job Block Comics. Hope you're well. We've got, there she is. Oh, I thought I'd missed her again. <laughs> well, I thought I was in trouble. Howdy, Beth. Hope you're well. Uh, scrolling on down, is that it? Do I have everybody? We've got McPuffin Muffin in here as well. That's such a great name. Uh, and we have Off My Shells. Hello, all Scott as the official comment checker. Have I missed anyone? Dean, you've missed Amy, <gasps> right? No, nah, I'm joking, she's not here. It's fine. Oh, Scott, <laughs> don't <laughs> make me hold my anxiety. My anxiety went me. through the roof, then. <laughs> Also, uh, Liam has nailed the spelling of Shamai. Is that how you spell it? Uh, mm -hmm. For those listening on podcasts, it's S-H-W-M-A-E. Shamai. We now we've done the uh, spelling lessons. 
let's get on with it then. We're going to need, as always, a synopsis to uh, to start us off, and that is by the person that chose uh, this week's book, and that was none other than Mr. Shane down here. Before, Shane, you give the synopsis, let's just say a quick hello to Firehawk. You just sneaked in here. How you doing, mate? All right, Shane, over to you, mate. So uh, two cosmic beings, um, not so subtly DC and Marvel, notice each other after billions of years of existence and decide that only one of them can exist. So they pick champions from their respective universes to fight it out and the winner gets to survive and the losers get to disappear. And that's pretty much the story of DC vs Marvel. Yep, four so issues of people familiar. beating the hell out of each other, I think. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth pointing out as well. Um, we would have got around to this, but I thought let's let's I, I want to have a little bit of fun today with this episode because back in the day, uh, they actually let people vote. You can see Shane's holding up his card there. They actually let people vote on five of the battles that were in this uh, four issue mini series. Uh, so I'll show you the polling card there as well. So you can see there down the bottom, you would put a little cross next to who you would want to win the fight. And then I think, did you take this to your local comic shop, your LCS? Is that how you got they, this in? They were at the local comic shop. They were on the counter. So you'd pick one up, fill it out, and they would send it off for you. Can there I you ask, go. Can I ask, so, when, when were you asked to fill that out? Like before what issue or? Before issue one, Scott. Is it before issue one? Came out? <laughs> I don't know. Like I thought it was like after issue one came out, and then you um, no, it in. a promo came out for issue one, which had the first um, eight pages, I think, and so you got a ballot in there as well, and then you would vote because the entire thing was done. Um, the art was done. The characters were done. Um, the, the, they had each artist had completed both, so you had each character oh, winning, yeah. and I actually have. Um, the prints for the Superman and Batman. Uh, sorry, nice. the Superman and Hulk fight. So you see the actual page and then you see the alternative page, which nice. is obviously the other person winning. I don't know if we want to get into spoilers. Well, let's, let's, just, gone, let's, just, <laughs> let's just reel it back a little bit before we get into talking about the art and stuff. So as I said, I want to have a little bit of fun today. So what we're going to do is those five battles that they let people vote on. Obviously, this, is, this came out pre MCU pre Snyder, so we're gonna have a rematch. We're gonna ask people watching along um, who they want to win out of those five battles again. So intermittently, we'll just stop the chat and we'll see who people want to win. So we'll kick off with the first one. Uh, so everyone, if, if you're watching along, you, you say who you want to win right now. So the first battle there is Superman versus the Incredible Hulk. So you just uh, drop your uh, your who your who your champion is in the chat there, and we'll get a, we'll get a kind of an average over uh, what people think. What about us? No, we you don't get count. to vote. Oh, what? No, no, you don't get to vote. This is just for the the cool people. So okay, you so, don't get to I, vote. so me and me and Ding will vote, and you guys can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to need to kick this one off. Uh, let's get it started because, as I said, we have a lot to get through as well. So, uh, who started last week? I just can't remember. Yeah. All right. Phil, do you want to take this one then? All right. Um, when this was picked, I kind of thought to myself, oh, no, here we go. Are we kind of silly kind of crossover book that's going to be nonsense. But I actually thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, the artwork is really, really suspect. Like the anatomy of some of the characters is just outrageous. It does not work. It, it's not. It's you can't bend your legs certain ways. You, your calf can't be ten times the size of your ankle, you know, and still be able to swing from building to building. It's bonkers. But it's we've said it before. It's it's the nineties. You can kind of these things can can pass. But yeah, I thought it was really good. Um, I was also worried about being the uh, or having too much character format, as Scott likes to call it, but. It wasn't, right. even though even though it is, but it wasn't. It wasn't like Secret Wars where there was just too much of these random said listers. It was like the big hitters, and um, I yeah, I thought it was great, and I loved the way, uh, like you know, it wasn't like Peter Parker, Spider Man. It wasn't you know, uh, they had Superboy. It wasn't like they had like uh, like you know the main kind of ones. There was a few, a few fringe players, even like Kyle Rayner and stuff as well. Like 
But yeah, yeah it was ben, I, I, ben Riley, wasn't it? Was the yeah, was the yeah. Spider Man in, in in this? I do agree. Yeah, yeah. I that was one of my worries as well. It being like just rammed full of character. I thought here we go again, you know. Um, but no, it was it had a very different vibe to it. Um, yeah, but as you I'm said, not... Scott's phrase: there was no character vomit in this. Yeah, it, it worked for me. I just had a, had a good time reading it. I say the artwork wasn't extravagant in in terms of like there's no groundbreaking artwork. It was just nice and colourful and vibrant and. A joy, to be honest. Yeah, the I, I had a mixed thing with the art, and we'll get we'll get before we kind of move on and, and talk about the art now. I'm looking at the chat here. That looks like an even split to me. I haven't gone yeah. and counted them, but that 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 looks very close. I don't know whether Scott, do you want to give him a count and see mm. uh, Superman or Hulk? <laughs> so you can see the the cogs H- moving. H- in H- H- Hulk's Hulk's taken it. To be honest, is he? No. I, yeah. No way. No way. No uh, way. It's seven six to Hulk. Yeah. Wow. So originally uh originally for those that didn't read along, Superman won this one back in the day. So people voted for soups on that one. So yep. rematch Hulk wins, man. <laughs> wow. Nice. All right, so let's uh, let's get onto the art. We do have some more of those as well, folks. We'll bring them up as we go along. But uh, uh, let's let's get into the, the artwork. Scott, what what are you making of the artwork in this? I think I think Phil nailed it. Like there was nothing groundbreakingly fantastic about the artwork, but it was just good. It was just you know you know you could, obviously you could tell who everyone was. Um, the designs were great. Um, you know the fights were very very actiony. Um, and oh, yeah. yeah, very colourful, and yeah, it was good. I, I personally, um, I struggled a little bit with the artwork. Like, I have a, a love hate thing with that with Dan Jurgens. I kind of like his art, but I think you said Phil, like some of the anatomy is like really sketchy yeah. for me with with Jurgens stuff. Um, it's enjoyable, like in a kind of fun way, but I do look at something like that opening page, and I think Comics versus the World posted on Instagram saying like how the hell are Spidey's limbs attached here, like you know, like yeah, yeah. on that opening page. Plus, yeah. like er- everyone's muscles have their own muscles, like muscles on top of muscles. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously he's seen he's seen myself, and I thought that looks great. I'll draw it in page, but it's just like muscles have muscles. It's just Again, to, to coin a phrase though, when this goes back to the I think the maximum carnage days, it's the nineties. Yeah. You know, I think it was all about muscles on muscles and big guns and pouches. That's that's what it was, yeah. wasn't it? And, and boobs, because we see a lot of that as well. Yeah, Wonder Woman's <laughs> boobs were. Like, immaculate like, <laughs> <laughs> I just like there was one scene where she was a lower, like bent over slightly and I was like what the hell is going on they just drawed circles yeah. like <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I was reading it too low down I was reading what, 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 <laughs> what, <laughs> what, <laughs> Sarah beside me while well, she was watching TV and and she kind of like looks over at that at that page. It's like, what are you reading? Why does her boobs look like that? And I had to try and explain why her boobs are just massive and round and like not really it's realistic. The 90s, babe, leave it alone. Yeah, that's it. It is. Yeah, they, yep. 90s uh, comic books for you right there. I'm going to just pause us there because I said we got a lot to get through. So I, I'm going to throw up the next one for everybody. That's a that's a tough call. Right. What, who who do you want right to? Time. I'll keep track this time. Captain America it? or Batman? That is not a tough call at all. <laughs> says you, the, says you, the DC fan. I'm Bear staying out. I'm I'm T Batman. I'm staying out of it. Bear in mind, Batman didn't know that Marvel and Captain America existed, so he didn't have, he didn't have a plan for it. You know, he's always planned ahead. He couldn't plan for this one. Well, that's true. Yeah, he did yeah. know that he'd already met Spider Man. The, the Joker mentions it when he meets Spider Man. He's like, because he the. Did they acknowledge the previous crossover? The Batman Spider Man crossover? Oh, um, yes, they did. Joke, uh-huh. yep, they did. Yep. So yep, Joker's they... already met Spider Man. No, not this one. He's met Peter Parker because Ben Riley doesn't remember him, obviously, because it's not him. But yeah. he, they, so they have been in the Marvel Universe before. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, they do They do reference that, don't they? That, that previous uh, um, crossover there as well uh let's yeah. just have a look uh we've got a, a comment here from off my shelves the depiction of women was one thing that put me off massively i struggled with the art big time i think jurgens is always going to be a hit or miss for people to be honest he's one of those i think you either really like him or you, or you really don't i think yeah it's um, not even really like, like not even 
yeah, it's not even like the like the boobs of the women. It's like they're all wearing like high. I don't want to really call them like high up kind of leotard type things. It just reminds yeah. me of like the girl, like women in the eighties doing like yogas and gymnastics and stuff. That, that like, was the nineties, you know. We, we can't. That's just the way it was at that time. I mean, you look at a pop culture around at that time, like MTV yeah. and all of that stuff. That's just how it was, man. You know, it was reflected in 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 all I, culture at that point. I like long legs and big thighs and small waists and big boobs on my women. I can't help it. It's just what I like. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to stop this before it borders on the edge of pervy right now. Scott, give us a call. Captain America or Batman? Mate, it's really close. It's 12-1 Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 13-1 Batman. Well, <laughs> again, in for those that didn't read along, Batman won this one uh, originally as well, didn't he? Uh, by default, I would say, really, because Cap sort of nearly drowns, doesn't he? So Batman saves him. and yeah, Because Batman kind of... thinks faster. Batman thinks faster than Captain America can. That's why he wins. Oh, yeah. He's but, able and... to adjust. We, uh, we have the comic board joining us as well. Howdy to you. Hope you well, mate. In a straight and, uh, fight. One on one. Sorry, sorry Phil. Uh, sorry, Phil. I just yeah. want to say hello to uh, Greyman as well. Greyman's in here. I've just just seen. And Tottenham Gaming as well. Sorry. Hey. Jesus. Add it to you. <laughs> Everyone's sneaking in. <laughs> um, can we? Uh, can we bring up Superman's mullet? <laughs> Superman's with his hair. Like? It, was, it was great. <laughs> This is this is just after he came back to life. So I was like, "What the hell is that hairstyle, man?" This is uh, this is like I saw that, and you know, because recently the uh, the video of Nick Cage uh, and Tim Burton yeah, doing the whole Superman thing is kind of like doing the rounds again. And as soon as I saw Superman, <laughs> I just thought of Nick Cage. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear me! All right, I, I, so, I like him a lot. Bring it back. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like long hair. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I was just like, I've never just, I've never seen Superman with a mullet before. This is the first time I've ever read Superman with a mullet. And then you see Clark Kent with a ponytail. Let us, <laughs> let us move, let us move on to the art, then, folks. I am going to push things along a little bit today because we we do have a lot uh, to get through. Uh, so let's start with uh, Shane. Seeing as uh, you picked this, mate, you want to you want to start with yours? Yep. I mean, what, what other page was I meant to pick? Wonder Woman, <laughs> Thunder Woman, you know, she, she's absolutely fantastic. But, um, <laughs> Scott. Um, but I picked it for two reasons. Obviously, the design of Wonder Woman and she's holding Mjolnir, but also the fact that it shows what kind of person she is in this single page when she drops the hammer to have a fair fight. Because mm, yeah. she knows she could instantly yeah. Yeah. just beat Storm, but she wants a fair fight, even though her universe is at stake. She's still got morals and standards. Do, and that's do you know that. that was that was one of my favourite moments in this book? The, just the fact that she was worthy enough to pick up that hammer. Yeah, I thought same. that was really yeah. cool. It was. I think yeah. this page impacted me the most in the whole read, where she, at the point where she just drops it, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah like that is like that was probably the most um, uh, the deep character, the deepest character bit in this book, in my opinion. Like where you yeah. just see." Their actual character come out and she's like, "Yeah, let's just let's crack on." Like that's this is me. Thing. Yeah, uh, that's one thing. Sorry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. That's one thing I like throughout the whole book that no one was better than anyone else. They they weren't going to put each other's characters down for each company, and the mm -hmm. fact that you know because they you can't do they can't have Wonder Woman destroy Storm or vice versa, then go back to Marvel or DC and their characters are rubbish because they're not better than. Wonder Woman, so and so. Well, I, I think the, the page I think I chose will will reflect what you're saying there uh, as well, Phil. Uh, just looking at some of the comments here as well, we got uh, I think Stormcore Collectibles and uh, Adam and Cole both agreeing that Superman looks like he's in luck now. <laughs> yeah. With that haircut, <laughs> the gems are so them. slack. He was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, poor, poor seeps, man. Uh, okay, so uh, before we uh, move on to uh, the next page, uh, let's just throw up the next one there for people. Wonder Woman versus Storm, everybody. Ding, ding, ding. Fight! I, I was surprised Wonder Woman lost that battle, yeah. to be honest. I don't understand how. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it was down to a vote. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> Which is what we're doing right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, there's your page, mate. Want to talk us through that one? Yeah, just one thing throughout the, the whole book. I thought the battle scenes were were really kind of 
really good and really dramatic. And like this, this is like the two big hit, like hard hitters, and they're just thumping each other. And you could really kind of see the punches, like the rocks flying everywhere for, on on impact. And like again, Superman wasn't using like you know his laser eyes or whatever you call them. It, it was just a straight fist fight almost. And it's just like I, I just quite yeah. liked the you know it's a heavyweight bout. And yeah, I thought this was great. Yeah, don't they? Yeah. Uh, don't they get? Uh, when they're kind of called upon to fight, don't they don't they actually get transported to the desert as well, so that they're like the nowhere near anyone else? Oh yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They okay, get sent yeah. to the Grand Canyon, yeah. So there's no destruction, yeah, yeah. But Superman does use his laser eyes because Hulk punches him, and he says, "Someone who can hit that hard can take a full blast of heat vision." So then yeah. he blasts the Hulk. Oh, that's and how he wins. Goes, yeah, and then yeah. just starts punching. Yeah, they just batter each other. It's fantastic. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that is, when you're talking of those fight scenes, that is literally, that's your heavyweights, isn't it? That's yeah. your, like, stand there toe-to-toe punching each other kind of thing right there. Yeah, I, I'll be points. honest, I re- usually with fight scenes, I I kind of find them sometimes a little bit mm, a little bit kind of twee these days now when you look back on them. That's, yeah, it's nostalgic, but compared to what we have now, there's, there's a very huge difference there. But I really enjoyed the fights in this. I really did enjoy the battles. Yeah. Even that one, like look at the muscles on both of them, like they're just outrageously like, not not at all accurate or anything. And like like Superman's ankles, like it's like you know, the, he didn't skip that leg day, but he skipped does, ankle day. It, just, can like, I just ask as well, what is going on with his one leg there? If you look at his is it his right leg? It's, yeah. it's like a spaghetti. <laughs> And he's got those, a noodle leg. It, Super, even those, is, is that what the kids call the stanky leg these days? Is uh, that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> even his punching arm there, it's just, it's just huge. It's massive. Completely outrageous. Yeah, Agreed. yeah a good example of the uh, the fight scenes in this, though. Um, Scott, do you want to give us a rundown on the Storm Wonder Woman battle? Uh, Wonder Woman, we've got 13. Storm, we've got two. That's there you go. That's all <laughs> like it. I do. I will need the name of the two people that voted for Storm, so I can block I them. Suppose, <laughs> I suppose if this was a vote back in this was a vote back in '96, like the X Men were probably bigger at that stage, weren't they? Yeah. So they, they just voted for the favorite. But so that. that's the whole point of redoing this. Like I said, this is like before MCU. It's before all of that. So I, I think. Personally, I, I'm sure Shane will agree with me. I think a wrong has been righted here today with that vote. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tottenham Gaming was saying about the Hulk and, and Superman. He says it looks like they eat weights. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got Adam saying uh, about the Hulk and Superman, uh, this page should have been called primary <laughs> colours versus secondary <laughs> colours. Although Hulk's purple trunks were at the cleaners that day, let down. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the uh, to the, uh, the next page then. And uh, Scott, do you want to do you want to cover yours? Yes. Nice. This page was cool. You know, it was like you know they've actually merged characters together, and it was really fun taking a look at this page. Going right, okay, who was that? You got Batman, Wolverine there, Superman, Captain America. Uh, you got like Nightcrawler and oh, Green Goblin or something maybe, and Storm and Wonder Green. Woman. Creeper. Um, Creeper, yeah, sorry. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just it was just cool just looking at all these characters. And I was like, you know, this is it was fun to see how they designed these combinations of, of characters. And it was just, yeah, just fun. I like that. Dr. Yeah, Doomsday I... up in the corner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Shane, can, 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 you, can you help me out, Shane, as well? Who was it that the Joker was merged with? Because they called him the hyena, didn't they? Who was he merged Saber, with? Sabretooth. Ah, okay, yes, saber tooth. I was I couldn't work it out. <laughs> so, yeah, how, how, could that? How, uh, how could you not? How could you not work it out? It's Batman's greatest villain and Wolverine's greatest villain. Shane, you've seen me <laughs> doing Hulk word smashes. <laughs> I'm not good at this. <laughs> but that is a great page, though. I I do think that the uh, I think the character designs, the way they put them together, did look quite awesome. Yeah. To be fair, yes. Spider Boy is very cool. He has a web shooter, yeah. which is a pistol, which is very cool. Yeah, Stormcore Collectibles is saying, personally, really like this page. As a Funko Pop collector, it's really close to a Marvel line I collect, he says. Nice. And I Job, Job Lock Comics says, love those amalgam characters. I love the uh, Doctor, Doctor Fate and Doctor Strange ones, really cool to be for personal. And uh, Triple G uh, that, was a fan, that, fan of Dark Claw as well. 
um, feel that what that character is actually three characters. It's Doctor Strange, Doctor Fate, and Professor X. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> That's, that's a little bit that's of trivia. A, that's that's a lot of time spent studying, right there, folks. Three PhDs. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we uh, before we move on, I'll I'll uh, I'll flash up another one for folks. This time we have Wolverine versus Lobo, folks. Who wins? And uh, while everybody froze, right, while everybody froze in their uh, their vote for that battle, I'll pull up my page here. I picked this one. Purely because when we get to this point in the, the story, it all kind of fits. And to me, you see that that what it's just that one panel really where it says, "What does it say?" It says, uh, "You, you, you did well. well. Yeah, you've done well." And then all of this kind of you see the purpose of all of this, and that it is essentially a love letter to the characters produced by both companies. You know, it's it's not about Marvel versus DC at all. Really this book, it's about acknowledging that the characters that both companies have created have essentially outgrown the fact that they are Marvel or DC, you know, I mean, they're loved. That's all that matters. You know, it doesn't matter who publishes them. And I, I just thought that panel really kind of like stood out for me. Yeah. You know, I, I thought that was the whole point of the book condensed into one page for me. I thought it was great. I love how they get to that as well, because they each see, like, Marvel sees Batman and DC sees Captain America. They see the history of the characters and yes. they're, they're just a mutual respect for each other that they could create something like that. It's just fantastic. It's really nice. Yeah, you can imagine he... them in a... Sorry, Sorry go on. I was just going to say, you can imagine the heads of each company actually having this conversation and shaking hands after the pitch meeting. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like one couldn't exist without the other because they both kind of help each other. Like the, in terms of like the companies as such, like you know Marvel and DC, like you can't have one just control the comic book world. So this is kind of like their mutual respect this way too. Right, like yeah, that. like 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 Shane says, you know, they have those those pages uh, where they say, you know, they give a little history of Batman. You know, like you know, witnessed his parents dying, and it says. Uh, but something about him being unique on his own. And then you have that about with Captain America, doesn't it? And it says, you know, but he's unique. And I think that Weak was a nice body, way. Of... Strong of mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was a nice way, really, this this kind of four issues of showing, yeah, there's a lot of similarities across characters and there's a lot of competition and stuff like that. But they are unique enough, these characters, that they, they do stand out uh, on, on their own. And they are loved individually, you know. And that's what I thought was really cool about it. There we go. That was my, my page pick. Scott, have we got a rundown on Wolverine and Lobo? Wolverine 9, Lobo 3. Ooh. I think that makes sense, to be yeah. fair. Although, I will say Lobo can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman. Um, does Wolverine stand a chance? He can just crush him into a ball and throw him into the sun. But okay, I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the original, again, for those that didn't read along, you know, in the original, you know, battle, Wolverine did win as well, didn't he? Although you don't actually see anything there, do you? They fall yeah. behind that counter. And then next thing that's... you see, Wolverine's hand punch through and he gets a cigar. Like, you don't see... cigar? I think that's best, though, because, I mean, to beat Lobo, you would have to shred him into pieces because he can come back from a single drop of blood. So Wolverine did do some damage behind that bar, and I wouldn't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I suppose that's a good point. <laughs> good fair point. Uh, okay, then. Uh, let's get on to the, uh, the the story and the writing, then. Um, the, the whole uh, meat and bones of, of this thing. Um Scott, do you want to go first, mate? Talk about the writing, what you thought. Uh, I didn't enjoy it. Uh, in in all honesty, <laughs> I didn't enjoy the writing. Um, I just thought it was very fast paced and just a bit a bit choppy, and um, it was all about a shiny box, <laughs> like. Who doesn't love a shiny box? I was just like, this is all based around a light up box. Like, and all of a sudden, all these characters have just gone into you each know, other's worlds and stuff. I was just like, you do know yeah. what the box represented, though. You did get that, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know, but it was a box. It was yeah, a it metaphor. Was, <laughs> yeah, it was essentially it was it was a shard of of the the 
the power of those two brothers, yeah. wasn't it? You know, same as Alex. What was his surname? The guy Ash. becomes. Yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he was a shard too, wasn't he? Along with the homeless guy. Yeah, I, you know, things just it was just too it was just too fast paced. Like you know, like I, I know there was a lot of characters to 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 get into it and stuff, but then each fight only lasting like uh, two or three pages each, and and then it was just like you know, it was just like a fight, 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 win, fight, 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 win, fight, 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 win, and then I was just like, okay, like like I feel like. These are superheroes. These are massive characters and strong characters, and then that one of them is beating another one in like a few minutes. You know what I mean? But then you've re you read other comics, and it's like they go toe to toe with other people who are weaker, maybe. But, yeah. So you're saying you find it? It could have been. It wasn't as balanced as you would have expected yeah, it to be. I mean, yeah. you know, Superman versus Hulk. Like, like if if you know if if you were going to watch like a f a film of that you would expect you know that in a film you'd expect it to last ages like you know the hulk and the hulk buster fight as well that was you know that was yeah. a good fight in a film but well you know, you've got you've got stormcore they... collectibles here uh, agreeing with you as well mate he says i was this is harsh he says i was quite <laughs> outspoken about doctor strange when we read it but that was a joy to read in comparison to this it was like fan fiction written by my 4 year old <laughs> you got some support there scott Oh, wow. I feel like if I mean they could have gone the Secret Wars route and made this a twelve issue run and each issue be about a fight, but that would be boring. If if you know it would have lasted too long. I think they they did a nice compact story, quick fights. You, they didn't have to. All they had to do was subdue them. So whether yeah. that be tying them up, knocking them down, pinning them with a killer whale, you know, just yeah. any. They they didn't have to go all out to kill them. Or anything yeah. like that or knock yeah. them out so so you know you couldn't draw that out for too long i mean maybe an extra page each fight but i will say as well i don't think you maybe would have got marvel or dc to commit to something that long either i mean yeah you know four issues is not really a lot for them to kind of set aside any competitiveness and put something out but anything longer than that i mean you're gonna start struggling to get people to agree on things. Mm. Um, just have a look at the comments here. Uh, uh, Scott, you've angered um, Shane's brother no, here. Game. Are you comparing the Hulk Buster to Superman? Get out. I wasn't doing that. I was comparing like the length of fight. You know what I mean? Um, oh, okay. Um, and and Grey Man here has just made a point as well. He says, access the only character joint owned by DC and Marvel. Oh. There you Check go. that in your quiz, Shane. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon on the quiz, Phil. What about yourself, mate? What about, about the writing? Did you did you get on with this? No. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was fast. Uh, it was loose. It, it's meant to be. It, uh, that's kind of how I took it. Like, it's not. I, I get the impression that this wasn't like this huge big event that they're going to sell in millions and they want to like, promote their own companies. It was just let's get the, get together and just deliver a bit of fan service because you've got like you know Marvel and DC and we all like both characters. But now you have them fighting each other. It's like the dream battles. It's, this is what you want to see, type thing. So yeah. I didn't take it serious enough to think, yeah, God, it's silly. Of course it is. But I just enjoyed it for the ride we had. And uh, as Shane was saying, four issues for me is enough. Uh, uh, maybe six, you could argue. But if you had done 12, like Secret Wars, oh, I would have hated it. I'm pretty yeah, certain. It would have been too much. I, I kind of agree with Joblock Comics here as well. He's saying that uh, the concept was what drove this. It was just for the sheer joy of the premise that this was created. And I kind of, there's some truth in that. Just the, the sheer idea of the two big companies coming together and you finally getting to see, you know, like Batman and Captain America duking it out. Like, you know, I, I, if you were a kid in 96, like the excitement just yeah. surely would have made you wet yourself over this. You know? <laughs> Yeah, like, I didn't go concept. that far, but I did grab it as soon as I saw it. <laughs> you wet yourself as soon as you found out we were rereading this. Don't tell a lot to me. <laughs> I reread this at least once a year. <laughs> really? So what, what what draws you to this then over and over again? I just, I love that the, I know it's fast, but it's hectic because their universes are on the line. They have to just get to the action. They just have to fight. I just love the fights. I just love the action and the character interactions. I love when Peter Parker hits on Lois and Clark's there and he's like, yeah. the fuck out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I like all those little that things. That was a bit awkward, I'll be honest with you. 
Yeah, it's like where's oh he's not he's not with MJ, is he? Because it's Ben Riley, so that's why he's hitting on Lois. Yeah, yeah. But I like all the interactions. The Joker and the Spider Man interaction at the beginning was fantastic. Was I was going to say that, but that that was like the, your opening segment, and that was a kind of like a monumental thing. It's like well, here's the Joker and here's Spider Man. At this point, I didn't really realize it was Ben Riley, but uh, I should have done because it's Ben Riley's suit. But I was thinking this is Spider Man and the Joker together, and like that was great. Yeah, it was. Uh, just just to check out a few comments here as well. Oh, my shells is saying, uh, I couldn't put it better than Stone Cold Collectibles. It was just a ridiculous read, both in art and story. Uh, I know it's not meant to be more than fan service, but it wasn't enjoyable for me. And Shane, a question for you here from Chipper G Comics. Has access been used since the follow-up to this? I know you've got the answer to this one, mate. Um, just in the two miniseries, Access and All Access four-part miniseries. That's yep. the second oh, volume, isn't it, that one? Yes. Yeah. Yep, that's All Access, and then you have Access, which happened just before that one. There we go. So there we go. I mean, I I, I kind of agree with you. I, I, I didn't hate this, so I wouldn't go so far as to say kind of like, you know, this was horrible. Uh, I enjoyed it, but to me, it was just silly fun. It was just silly, oh, yeah. throwaway, nonsense fun that was just exciting to see your favourite characters smashing each other up. Uh, but what I did like is the voting element. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. And I, I love it when comic book companies did that years ago, like when they did uh, the death in the family and things like that, when they let people vote and they let people choose. And I'll be honest, I wish they did it more these days. You'd think with the increasing technology we'd get more of that. And I know, I think Marvel recently, didn't they let you vote on which person you wanted in one of the new X-Men teams at some point? I think they did that uh, this year or last year. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I didn't take it seriously. I think that was the key for me. Like, I think if I did go into this, like, this is a serious thing. Like, I think I would have been disappointed. I think this yeah. is where I fell short then, because I think I did come at it uh, with that, you know, point of view. Um, uh. I, I took it seriously. I th I thought the the voting thing was a bit of a gimmick, and that's why I asked Shane earlier when did they do the voting card? Because I was just I, I was trying to work out in my head like why have they made the fight so like short? And I was thinking, oh well, maybe if they did the vote per issue, then that would be like, oh, we don't have enough time. We need to make all of this quite quick and you know whatever. But it sounds like they've prepared. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I should have taken it more lightheartedly and just just as a bit of fun. Um, but yeah, I, I read it uh, with the view of it being a big serious event um, with ramifications, but it doesn't it doesn't affect anyone, does it? See, I think that's the thing. Like, you were never going to get any long term consequence out of that book because neither DC or Marvel would be willing to change anything with their characters or their universes going forward. So it was always going to be a, a stop there, I think. Yeah. You know. yeah. Were but you then, at least happy that the Flash won? <laughs> yeah. I was happy. I wasn't. I, I was so gutted. Uh, where, was, where was Cyborg? Yeah, I was so gutted that people couldn't vote on that one. I wanted people to vote just to <laughs> see Sky get nervous. Quicksilver would win hands down. It's faster, better looking, no. more powerful. No. No. All right, speaking of the the, uh, the voting folks, uh, it's the last one. So oh. we've got Superboy versus uh, Ben Riley Spider-Man. Who you wins? Know, in, you know, in this fight where Spider-Man was like, I've got this new thing, like... In, uh, what was the thing? It was like impact webbing or something he called it, didn't he? Was that new yeah. for this story? Or was that a thing you already had? Or like, I was like, I that's really cool. I don't, I haven't got clear. I wasn't reading Spider Man at that point. No, yeah, that was, the, that was the Clone Saga spell where everyone left Spider Man because everyone hated the Clone <laughs> Saga. <laughs> yeah. It's, n it's not the most highly rated Spider Man story, is it? No. Clone is everywhere. Yeah. I do like the fact that when they have that kind of little, when they're squaring off against each other, and, and Spider Man says to to Superboy, doesn't he? he says like, "Why are you like Soup's kid or something?" And he says, "No, I'm a clone." <laughs> and <laughs> Spider Man's kind of like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did enjoy that kind of little nod to what was going on. And again, those little nods to the similarities 
it was almost like for a brief moment there, like DC and Marvel were able to kind of laugh at just how much they do kind of nick from each other. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think right, I, I, just, I, just me, just me. Not right. one then. Like, he's it's quiet the comments. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know who uh, Superboy was, so I, I had no idea. Oh. You've seriously offended Shane right there. I, think. I, I know, I was afraid to say it. Sorry, Shane. Love you. Uh, so that means you <laughs> haven't read The Death of Superman and The, the I, I Return of what? Superman. Superman Dies. <laughs> Spoilers, the death and the return. <laughs> spoilers, back. you know, like what, 20 years, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was it, like 28 years ago, Superman died? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> and then Super, uh, Superboy is a clone of Superman and Lex Luthor. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, Scott, do you want to give us a rundown then? Um, what uh, what people it's, thought of the, uh, the fight there? It's the closest one we've had. And uh, it was seven to Spider Man and four to Superboy. Okay, so that's pretty. That's like the original fight then, because uh, Spider Man won that one, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. Uh, we we've got. I'm just gonna. Uh, we've got a kidna. Two weeks in a row, folks. That I got it right. Uh, it says mullet Superman, metal album cover <laughs> four, clone Spider Man. <laughs> it's like like they want me to hate this. He oh, says. No. <laughs> Those are all the things that you are supposed to love in comic books. Yeah, he's in the <laughs> he's got the wrong hobby. He's got the wrong hobby. He has, <laughs> he thought, has not. I mean, he's got a point the, uh, to, to an extent. It, there's a lot of gimmicks in this. That's I what didn't I can take. I loved, I loved Thor's de- design in this. I, I didn't. I, I thought no. Thor was similar to the new, the new Donny Cates stuff. Like there was aspects of that. I thought, like from the, mm. if you look at the covers and stuff. Do you know what it is that I didn't like the helmet? Yeah. Oh no, that was my favorite part. No, I really like like that. Oh. No, do you know why? I I thought winged hat. (laughs) I thought it made him look too much like one of the X Men. Oh, for me, I can see that. Like Shatterstar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So I was just kind of no, no. Uh, Stormcore Collectible saying one good thing to come from this for me was the introduction to a few more DC characters. There you go. And uh, hey, Grey Man, Grey Man sticking up for all the metalers out there. Nothing wrong with Metal Four. I agree with you there, mate. Um, and Echidna saying, since my alias is no longer a challenge for Dean, maybe I should change it to something harder. Like I am not even going to try. <laughs> Quite That's so a cool. month's worth of practice right there. <laughs> He's mean. <laughs> I like this guy. Keeping yeah. on my toes, definitely. Echidna is there. <laughs> All right, then, folks. Uh, so I think it's a mix again this week, then, isn't it? We, I think I, I, I can't see a lot of people sticking up for it in the chat, if I'm honest. Um, I know we've had a, a, a couple of comments here and there, but it looks like majority of people are saying they didn't really go for this. Um, and I think, Scott, you're, you're leaning towards that side of the fence as well, aren't you? Yes. So, okay. <laughs> is it right. better than is it better than Strange Origins? That's that's the thing. That's the question, isn't it? Phil's just hoping. Is it better than Maximum Carnage? That's all that matters <laughs> on the uh, on the murder <laughs> leaderboard. There. All right. Seeing as we've got a lot to do and a lot to get through, shall we? Shall we jump to final thoughts and and start that because we do have to do the uh, the pick at the end yes. uh, of this episode. Yes. So uh, let's uh, let's 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 get it going then. So they're on and they're off as we always do. Um, let's go for it then, Phil. Um, do you want to start off? And before you do, everyone, if you've read along with us this week, you know what to do. One to ten, give us your score on uh, DC versus Marvel, and we'll take an average of what everybody thought. Philip, over to you. Uh, I mean, I, I did take this as lighthearted fun. Uh, on, at the start and um i mean this is a book where you get to see kind of your heroes from both dc and marvel share share a page share a book and you know i have never read any crossover stuff before this and i'm not sure what else exists out there to read um we got all the dream battles you can you can ask for again hard hitters like hulk versus superman and and batman captain mary you're not gonna get that anywhere else so uh thoroughly enjoyed that i said i think it was clever the way that no company or no character got the better off the other one so badly the words they kind of it ruins their character for their company if you know what i'm trying to say it's like a fair kind of 
fight. I like, I like the way it was done. It was clever, even though they had to do it. Um, the art, I mentioned, it was really suspect. Um, like noodle legs and so on. But again, it's just, it, <laughs> it could pass because it's just, I, I took it as being fun. And it is the 90s. Muscles on muscles. Uh, you know, thighs and boobs, all that kind of stuff. That's, that's what you expect. Uh, the story was fast and loose, but I enjoyed it. I had a good time. But I can only really limit the score because it was just a silly story. But I'm going to give it uh, a rock hard six. Ooh. Nothing wrong with a rock hard six, Phil. Yeah. There we go. Shane, over to you, mate. Um, I mean, I picked it. I, I, this is not one that's changed my mind. I still love this book um, for the nostalgic reasons that I read it when it came out. Um, I've been collecting comics over 20 year, 25 years. So I read this when it was designed to be read, you know, back in the 90s. So I, I don't have to worry about any of the issues that the book may face today because I read it back then. I loved it. Um, I know the art's a bit janky. Um, I know limbs don't bend that way, but it's a comic book. Um, people aren't green either. So do you know what I mean? It's fine. <laughs> I can overlook these things. Um, I absolutely love this. I read it over and over again. And uh, for me, I, I can't give it anything less than a nine. I know it's not perfect, um, but I absolutely love it. And I have, and I will continue to read it again and again. That's good. That's good. It means wow. something. I love it. Scott, you're up next. Uh, I, I definitely think that um, Shane benefited from reading it when it came out. And I think, I think you know, 25 years later, um, you know, as and as a new reader myself, um, it didn't go down particularly well. I mean, it was a great concept and yeah, it was, it was fun. I, I do think it was too, too quick. Um, you know, the art designs and stuff was, was good. Um, but yeah, it was just, I just couldn't get over the fact that it was just all around a box. Like, <laughs> like I know, I know, I know the meaning behind it. I know what it is, but I was like, you could have chose someone else. You've got a box and you put duct tape on it. Like, come on. Um, and yeah, like the, the whole voting thing was fun and everything. Um, but, and, uh, something I did want to talk about was the whole amalgam sort of, sort of side of things. And like, I wish it lasted like the whole issue like it just seems like they built up to it combined everyone and then it lasted like a quarter of the book and then everyone was not combined and i was i was a bit gutted about that because that was probably my favorite part um but uh with all that in mind i think for me it's going to be a five oh it's a five from scott there okay so, um, so please invite room. me to the next quiz shane before we uh, before we get around to doing mine, we'll take a look at what everybody uh, scored in the chat here. So bear with me while I get all the way up to the top. Uh, and I think it starts here. So we've got Tottenham Gaming. Uh, it gives this an 8 out of 10. Uh, we have uh, McPuffin uh, Muffin giving this a 7. We've got Triple G uh, Comics giving this a 7-2. We've got Matt from Mystery Nights giving this a six. Uh, we've got uh, a six from Tom this month in movies. Storm Call Collectible saying a big three from me. If my four-year-old had made this, I'd be struggling to put it on the fridge. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and much. Adam sadly didn't read along this week. He said he couldn't manage to uh, find it on Comixology, he says, which is a shame as it sounds like it might have been dumb fun. So that's a, that's a shame. Uh, what else do we have here? We have Leon Cartwright. It was never intended to be a masterpiece. It was just a bit of fun, and I enjoyed reading it. Especially enjoyed the amalgam part. Six point five from Liam. There. Uh, we also have Off My Shelves four just for Wonder Woman losing mainly. <laughs> oh, Shame. someone wants to fight. Someone wants Shame. to fight. <laughs> and uh, we've got uh, we've got a kid who said abstains from voting this week. He said he didn't read it because it looks like everything I hate about superhero comics. For the record, I do like superheroes. Honest, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Never trust someone that says honest after their sentence. <laughs> <laughs> right. To, uh, can I to just push quickly out. say, sorry, can I just quickly say for all those that actually do like the amalgam part, there are 24 amalgam issues that you can go and find with all your favorite mm. characters. 
That's there you cool. go. And folks, further reading for you there as well. Um, for, for my final thought and score, um, I'm going to say I like this, um, but I didn't go into it with a serious head. I just thought well, I, I was more viewing it when I sat down and opened the pages. What kind of wacky nonsense am I going to find in here? And I kind of read it with that kind of mindset. So, yeah, it was over the top. Yeah, it was silly. Yeah, it was bonkers. Um, and it, that was fine. You know, this is four issues. Like, it, it's not going to... You're not going to be upset, I think, that you read this um, for me. Like, it's just good old Marvel, DC, 90s, crashing together in a very explosive kind of way. And uh, But I did like those nice nods that they do admit that they do kind of, you know, borrow from each other. And, and that kind of like little love letter that we saw to each other as well. I really loved that. But the thing I enjoyed the most was the vote. I loved that. Who doesn't like having those conversations, especially when you're a kid and you're like, who'd win in a fight, Hulk or Superman? This put yeah. that on the page. Do you know what I mean? This, all them conversations you had, this put this on physical paper so you could see it before your own eyes. So for me, that's got to count for something. So for me, I'm going to go in and I'm going to give this a 6.5 for me. Nice. That's where it's going to come at. All right, then. So that means scores. Everybody watching along, uh, unless we've had any more. No, I don't think we have. So everybody watching along, they have given this a 5.9. Okay. And us four plebs on the screen here, we have given this a 6.6. .6. Oh, no. Cool. So we've got a bit, a bit of a little bit of a gap there uh, this week. I think more so than the last two episodes that we've done. But the big question is, where does this fall on the Nerd Herd leaderboard? 6.6. .6, there's the leaderboard, folks. 6.6 .6 puts this joint 13th place with Once and Future Volume 1. Maximum Carnage. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so they got joint 13th place. Scott looks very unsure about that. Like, see, he's a big Once and Future fan. He's um, very, very unsure about that decision, I think. It's okay. It's sure, Scott? Are, yeah. are you going to kick off? <laughs> kind of kick off. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Liam here as well saying that it's gotten that if it were done these days, it would just be an internet poll instead of a ballot style yeah. vote. It would yeah, just be hashtags totally, and stuff, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. I think that's how they did it with that X Men vote thing. I think you went to their website and you just literally clicked on the picture of who you wanted, oh, and that's fine. Like that's the world we live in, but it's it's not the same, is it? It's not yeah. the same. It's something oh, to hold. Yeah, you get a physical thing that you can keep, and it's but that's just, that's oh. like kids these days even read comic books digitally. They don't read comic books physical do, do you know what? i like the idea of that though because you'd fill that out at your local con and i could just yeah. imagine kids in 96 standing around and going oh who are you gonna vote for like who are you gonna vote for oh you're not voting for him like and yeah. the excitement and the conversation and then, around that must yeah. have been really cool you know? and then just queuing up at the shop wondering if they if you if your vote won yeah. or if your vote lost and like you have a say great. on the, if, if superman won yeah 100 yeah, percent. it's the interaction true. i, I mean, suppose it's not I, I, I do think, though, it might be a little bit bad to teach kids that if your vote... Because if you, if you did vote and your characters didn't win, do you then feel like, well, what's the point of voting in elections? Because I, my, my vote doesn't count. Because so. Hulk lost, <laughs> so why should I vote yeah. Labour? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go, folks. That was uh, uh, DC versus Marvel, or Marvel versus DC, however you want to you, you want to term it. It's a uh, joint thirteenth place there on the Nerd Herd leaderboard. That's kind of what we thought of it. That's us picking it apart. Uh, and now we need to kind of decide what we're reading next week. And that is down to you guys watching right now. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, you get one one choice each. So throw your recommendation into the chat now. Uh, and Scott will collate all of your recommendations. We'll put it on the spinning wheel. We'll choose one at random. And whoever's recommendation we pick, uh, we have got a little giveaway. And we will invite you to come and join us for next week's episode if you want to come and talk about the book with us too. You don't have to, but if you want to. Yeah. Self story. So go for it, folks. Drop it all in the, uh, in the, in the chat and we'll, we'll go for it and we'll see what we got. This is the bit where Scott has to do some work now. Yeah. I feel like I've been working all day. <laughs> uh, 
I hope some good stuff there. Oh, Keenan yeah. Black, don't don't do it, me again. No way. Let's. Uh, should I start going through? I usually wait, don't I, until we get a, a few of them in there. So, uh, so we've got uh, Comic Bound. We've got Adam here saying, "Is that We Three or W E Three? How do you pronounce that?" I think it's We Three. We Three. Okay, so we've got We Three. We've got uh, Bethia saying self storage. Uh, we've got nice. Tom uh, Witchblade, the 2017 volume one. Uh, off my shelves uh, recommends uh, Hellboy Seed of Destruction. I think he's recommended that one before as well. Yeah. Um, uh, Firehawk yeah. is is oh. Watchmen. Uh, that's Phil's Phil's nervous about that one. Uh, we have uh, Batman Creature of the Night from uh, Liam. Uh, oh, we have the Gray Man. This time, is he? No, he's not gone for Fallout this time. We got the Gray Man, Martial Law. Uh, Stormcore Collectibles, The King in Black, as Phil said there. Uh, we've got uh, 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 Lights, Skin and Earth. Uh, we well, have... A few of these. Hang on a second. Chat has jumped on me. Uh, we've got Tottenham Gaming, Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader. I've not long ago read that. Uh, we've got Triple G Comics, Marvels. That's a great choice as well. Uh, SCC is saying fear, fear agent. Uh, as Firehawk changed, he's he's got before Watchmen. Can only have one Firehawk. Which one is it? Watchmen or before Watchmen? Uh, and we <laughs> and we have uh, McPuffin uh, Muffin saying uh, Vinland Saga by Makoto Yukimura. Don't say Saga. Mm. No, it's not so like that. It's an amazing <laughs> historical comic centered on Vikings. Well, that's 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 part of that, yeah, that's good. Uh, we've like got the comic board saying uh, the fix. Uh, Adam wants Gideon Falls. We've got Miles Morales, second print. We've got Matt Pestilence. Uh, do, 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 do. Hold on. We've got Daryl Marvel's Secret Warps. Is that meant to be Secret Wars? I don't know. <laughs> Can you confirm, Daryl, please? Is there an extra P? Is there a P in there for no reason? And Liam is saying, I finally read Fallout. There wouldn't have been a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Firehawks, Firehawks, Firehawks confirmed uh, before Watchmen. I think is his is his choice. There's a secret uh, warps book. Uh, there we go. So there is a secret warps, and and Kidna is saying the Ballad of Halo Jones. Yeah, I I think I'm all done now. Okay, is there, we got one choice per person on there as well because I know some people change their mind at, at yeah, several I points. Yeah, changed Firehawks. Um, that's the only one I saw that was. The change. Uh, hang on, hang on. Let me just double check. Uh, yep, I think that's right then. I feel bad for Bullion Fairhawk to change his decision because we said watch and I was like, oh, nice no, change it because <laughs> of that. Sorry. Yeah, Phil. All right. Okay, so uh, Scott has his screen on here, I do believe. Quick hide your history, the, Scott. Yeah, going, yeah. <laughs> just trying to get it. How do we full screen this? There we go. Everyone see that? You were, yeah, yep. but we can see that fine. So you you can shuffle that as many times as you want, mate. That is at your liberty to do so. Uh, I have to take it out of full screen. <laughs> 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 it's fine. We'll just leave it as it is. Everyone's entered in the order. They've entered it's in your choice. Your choice. Right. Scott, shuffle your choice, mate, on, on what you want to do. Good luck, everyone. Let's see what we're reading next week. Ooh. Nice. I can't remember what. So we got Tom. Uh, this month in movies, Witchblade Volume One. I think he said that was the two thousand and uh, and seventeen version. So there we go. That is what we are reading next week, folks. Of Witchblade from two thousand seventeen, Volume One. That's what we're reading. And Tom, right. you know we always give something away. So Tom, we are going to give you the Marvel Masterworks uh, Volume One of Uncanny X-Men, which features uh, the uh, reprint of uh, Giant Size X-Men 
And then you've got issues uh, 94 up to 99 in there as well. So nice. they're going to be sending you that. And I do believe, Shane, you've got something as well, haven't you? Yes. Um, I'm going to send you the two prints for the alternate oh. version of the battle between Superman and Hulk. So um, I'll pop those in the post to you as well. So you can see what it would look like if Hulk won the fight, which he didn't because wow. Superman's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk, wow. Tom, give it, give it a three to ten. She and he still want to send them? <laughs> I'm going to tear them in half first and then I'm going to send them. But yeah, he could tape them back together when they arrive. <laughs> well, I, do you know what? I think it's kind of nice. Uh, I think that Tom won actually because it was his birthday this week, everyone. Oh, as well, happy, if you really you oh, happy it was his birthday, birthday on Monday. Tom. So Happy there you go, birthday. Tom. Nice little bonus for you there. <laughs> there we go. That's what we're reading next week then, folks. Witchblade Volume 1 from okay. 2017. And who publishes Witchblade there? Just remind me. Uh, it was Top Dark Horse. Kai. Top Kai was Image. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure who, who has Tom, that. can you confirm who the publisher <laughs> is on there? Tom, you know, Tom will know. It's definitely Image and all uh, that. I just don't know what's, who it's through on Image. Cop Cow? Top Co, yeah, they're part of it. They're an imprint of Image. Yeah, but they they stopped, didn't they? So yeah, Tom's confirming each oh, yeah. image. Yeah, because yeah, I don't right. think to Top Cow stopped at a certain point. I can't yeah, remember it was when they when they stopped. So there you go, folks. That's what we're reading. Witchblade Volume One, 2017. Image. That's next week. Uh, so I think we've got some time to just kind of go around and let people know what we got going on this week. Yeah. Cool. Bill. Um. There's nothing on, on my channel, but this Saturday, 9 p.m. GMT, and I don't don't know how to work out the ESA times. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I will be appearing on TB Collect um, yes. channel uh, for TB Talks. Uh, that's this Saturday, and on Sunday as well. All being well, Highland G, who's not here tonight, but he's usually here in the chat. He's celebrating the 1,000 subscribers, and he's in a live stream on Sunday at 6 p.m. GMT. So I'll be appearing on that as well. Good and guy, that's, that's yeah. And TV uh, collects as well. I wasn't just yeah. choosing favourites there. <laughs> they're both really good guys. Uh, and everyone else in the chat, they're all good guys. See, everyone's a good guy. <laughs> just don't come <laughs> at me. <though>. I'm just. <laughs> uh, is that you, Phil? Yes, that's that's me. Yes, Shane. Um, I just have another what's in the box coming out tomorrow. Uh, I've, I've managed to keep to my schedule for five weeks, which is uh, good for me. <laughs> Okay, yes. there we go. Then. What's in the box coming? Uh, Scott? Uh, nothing for the next week, but I think I want to start building some hype for the for the end of the month stuff. Um, as as I've said uh, in the last Comic Airwaves episode, uh, we won't be doing a show at the end of this month, but we will be having a Best Bits episode uh, where producer Liam is the host. And uh, so he's, he's working hard on that. Uh, so that'll be on the 29th of May. Um, it's not up to set a reminder yet, but we're working on it, so do set your calendars. And then the day after that, which you can set a reminder for, is the next payday auction. Uh, and this time, uh, I th I'm thinking we're going to have about 30 bucks, only Marvel and DC. Uh, and we will be supporting uh, uh, Cancer Research UK. That's what we'll be uh uh, support in this month so set a reminder for that if you want to get your hands on some nice books and support cancer research uk nice there we go then, folks and uh, another auction and uh, i have to say scott i think you did really well with the last one it was good um, fun you know yeah. yeah how much did you raise again on, on the last one Twelve pounds oh, that's that's great that was that's for that was for the mine charity yeah that's brilliant uh, ah yeah brilliant. we were chuffed all right, then, folks. So to, don't forget to tune in and uh, you know enter some auctions and uh, and do some good for charity. Um, as for me, I will finish us and close us out with some shout outs. And first one I would like to drop for you is Instagram uh, shout out. That is at the Geeks Unleashed. I've just thrown it in the in the chat there as well. Go check them out. Super nice guys, and they talk about all things geeky. So like movies, games, comics. Uh, they that's a podcast that they do there as well. Uh, so go and check those folks out there. And the last one I want to drop really and leave you with is a uh, man um, off my shelves. Go and check out off my shelves. 
I've just dropped the link in there as well. And uh, go and check out his channel. If you've not uh, uh, subscribed, go and do all of that YouTube stuff that people do. And uh, go check him out on Instagram. He's on Instagram as well. So, uh, and please do find each other as well. If anyone watching in chat, if you haven't all gone and added each other on Instagram, please go and do that as well. You know, go and connect yourselves all up because you have all got individually some like cool stuff going on. So yeah, do that too. Network. It's all, that's what it's about. That's it then really for me, folks. And again, I just wanted to, uh, um, came up earlier, but I was going to do it at the end. Just want to say a happy birthday to Tom. Who, uh, who turned 21 for the third time <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> so happy birthday to Tom. And that's it. I think that is us done and closed out. Don't forget next week, folks, we are reading uh, Witchblade uh, Volume 1 from 2017. And we will see you then. And in the meantime, Phil, what are we going to do? I think I think we're getting our waves out. All right. Get, our, get your waves out.